this activity, you are asked to put decimal values in order from the least to greatest values. So when we do that, we start by looking at the biggest decimal value, okay? So we know in just looking at this that 1.05 or 1 and 5 hundredths is the only number with a whole number. So it's going to be our greatest value. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that over here and cross it out so I don't have to worry about it. So in trying to determine the smallest number, we look at the largest decimal place value. So that's the number right next to the decimal, the tenths value. I have a zero, a four, a six, and a one. This is where I decide which one is the smallest so that I can put it in order. Zero is less than four, six, or one. So 0 0.05 is my smallest value, okay? Because I don't even have, if we consider this money, I don't even have a dime, I have a nickel. I only have five cents. Here, if I have 0.4 or 4 tenths, that's 40 cents. 62 cents, 12 and a half cents. So after, in the tenths value here, I have a one, which is the next greatest value from zero. So I go 0.125, takes care of that and that, and then between 0.4 and 0.6, Four tenths is smaller than 62 hundredths. So this is your order for least to greatest with the decimals. Number two asks you to put the a set of, I believe, five fractions in order from least to greatest. Now, we didn't really need to worry about anything beyond looking because none of them started with uh, the same fraction. We really just had to figure out which one of these series had the smallest fraction. And we have a couple different ways we can do that. We can calculate the decimal value, take 5 divided by 8, take 1 divided by 4, 3 divided by 4, 1 divided by 2 to get the decimal equivalent to figure out which is larger uh, or which is the smallest. The other thing is we can just use some critical thinking to figure out proportion wise which one is representing the most. All right, if I look at five eighths, I don't even really need to worry about the actual decimal value, the proportion. I just know five is greater than eight, but less than, uh, so five is greater than eight. Um, I hope I explain this right. Half of eight is four. Five is greater than that. That means this value is greater than one half. But if I had six out of eight, that's more like three quarters of the amount. And so it falls between one half and three quarters. One quarter is really small. It's only 25% of something. Three quarters is 75% of something. That's almost all of it. You're just missing one piece. And then we have one half. So even though this falls in between uh, one half and three fourths, it doesn't really matter in the order of that because one quarter is going to be your smallest value. So then you would choose the series of fractions that went in that set. To choose the inequality statement for number three and number four, we have a couple different ways we can do that. We could convert 40% into a fraction or we could um, convert uh, 40% into a decimal and one fourth into a decimal. So lot, lots of options. If I had 40% out of 100, that is four tenths, and four tenths can reduce to two fifths. Two fifths versus one fourth, okay? Um, I might not be completely sure about how that relates. You could do lowest common denominator and equivalent fractions and stuff, or I just know one fourth is a benchmark fraction. It means I have a quarter of something, and a quarter of something as a percent is 25%. 25% compared to 40% is less. So 40% is greater than one quarter. Now, if I have seven tenths versus three fifths, I could also uh, I could calculate the decimal value of three fifths. Uh, I could, you know, easily do that, even just mental math, or just quick little math here to make it out of 10. I have 6 out of 10, which is 60%. So, 
60% versus 0.7, if I take 0.7 and convert it to a percentage, it's 70%. 7 out of 10 is greater than 6 out of 10, so 7 tenths is greater than 3 fifths.